Hey guys, welcome back to Interesting Video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Callista updated complete guide for patch 5.2 and of course this is going to be the first champion we're covering for this latest patch and mainly that's because um, I've been playing a lot of Callista in the previous patch and it's kind of one of the champions that I'm the most familiar with so I'm starting off with this one. Uh, but of course before we get into the nitty gritty, um, don't forget to check out Callista's basic guide that I'll put up in the cards above. Um, you know, for her skills, leveling order, tips and tricks, as well as some combos. But without further ado, let's jump straight into talking about her loadout. So first up, the items. So, with Callista, you actually want to go basically for a full attack speed, right? So first up, we're gonna go for Berserker's Greaves. Um, which is of course gonna give you 20 attack damage and 35% attack speed. Now you might be thinking, we already have so many attack speed items coming up, so why are we going for attack speed boots and not... Um, you know, instead the gluttonous greaves, the lifesteal boots. Well, basically the answer to that is, although we're gonna get a lot of a lot of attack speed items eventually, at the beginning we really need the attack speed, which is why we go for berserker's greaves. Because in lane, Callista is one of the strongest, uh, if not the strongest, uh, and it is the strongest in my opinion, uh, laning champion. So you really need that uh, attack speed to put the spirits into your enemy so that you can pull them out and do that insane burst damage. Now you can sell the Berserker's Greaves later on after you get your third item. You can change it for like defensive boots or also if you prefer, you can also go for the Gluttonous Greaves but at the beginning you always want to go for Berserker's Greaves. So first item is going to be Blade of the Rune King. Now of course no longer ruin the Blade of the Rune King, now it's the normal Bork. Uh, attack speed, of course attack damage, just a little bit of that. Uh, physical Vam, of course the on hit uh, health damage as well as the Drain Passive. Then we go for Rune and Hurricane. This one is really critical because um, Callista, a lot of her damage from her on-hit build come from her uh, come from pulling out her spear. So with the Runan's second item, allows you to put spears into three people at the same time, which basically it doesn't like triple your damage, but you know it almost kind of triples your damage. Uh, of course, you also get a little bit of AD, a little bit of on-hit damage, and you know things like that. And then we go for Terminus as our third item. Of course, Terminus completely unchanged from the previous patch. Magic damage on hit. AD attack speed as well as gaining stacking uh, penetration as well as stacking defenses when you uh, attack. So this is pretty much Callista's core build, these three items. Now for the last, uh, second last and last item, it is pretty variable. So for the second last item and last item, you do have a number of options. So first up, the option I like the best is personally Bloodthirster because Bloodthirster gives you not only a lot of AD but also a lot of physical VAM and just a lot of basically good stats in general. Now the most popular um, choice is actually Immortal Shield Bow uh, because most people like to go for Shield Bow for that shield, the lifeline shield as well as of course all of the the uh, good stats. However, I don't quite like Shield Bow because I feel like you lose out a lot of the value just based on the fact that you're not building crit so you're only gonna get that like um, you know 300 base plus the extra like 75 so a 375 shield uh, you know from the shield bow only. I think if you really wanted to go for this defensive item with a shield I think Sterics is probably better because you get extra health, you get extra AD, and you also get, you know, all of the, the nice stuff from the Sterics passive, uh, you know, things like that. So another uh, option is going to be Wit's End. So Wit's End, of course, is going to be another very strong on-hit item, but you really only want to go for this one if you're against heavy magic damage. So if you need ra magic resist, you want to go for Wit's End as your fourth item. And of course, and uh, last item options, you of course have GA for the revive. You can even go for um, Twin Guard, which of course now is reverted, so it takes like a, a little bit longer to stack, but even so, Callista generally is in, in fights for quite some time, so you can probably stack it up. And uh, Maw is only if you are into really a lot of magic damage, so the only time you ever build Maw is if you go for Wit's End as your second last item and Maw as your last item if you're playing into a team where there is an insane amount of magic damage. Think about it like... Um, you know, let's say an Evelyn in the jungle, let's say a Syndra in the mid lane, a Gwen in the top lane, and let's say like a brand support, something like that, or, or you know, like three, three to four AP sources is really only when you want to go for both of these resistance items, if not, it's probably not worth it. So for the runes, again, attack speed is very important, so lethal tempo, especially um, in lane. Brutal, of course, because again, you attack a lot, so you're going to proc it really often. Giant Slayer, of course, the best value here. Now, you, you could uh, actually swap out Alacrity for Bloodline, because Alacrity, of course, takes time to stack, so you don't actually need uh, Alacrity, but it's it's a little bit of personal choice, and I like to go for Bone Playing for the defensive capabilities. And finally, for the spells, it, it's going to be Flash and Exhaust pretty much every game, because uh, Callista are pretty low range, pretty easy to get into Exhaust range, and you, know, you don't really benefit from gold since you can hop around anyway. And yes, that's pretty much it for the loadout. Let's now talk about the gameplay.
Okay, so now into the gameplay itself. Of course, first uh, step is going to be to bind to our support, which in this case is going to be um, Maokai, who did just get nerfed in the recent patch, but again, still appears to be very strong. Um, Riot likes to give these minor, minor nerfs and a couple of rounds of these minor nerfs and probably uh, eventually after like maybe four rounds of nerfs, probably the champion will actually be balanced uh, like a lot of its predecessors. But um, Kalista, uh, as we know, very, very strong early game champion. However, uh, we're against a Kai'Sa and a Soraka. So Kai'Sa is not a very strong early game champion unless you make the mistake of isolating herself and letting her get off the isolated Q damage on you. Uh, in terms of her damage itself, Kai'Sa is actually a pretty decent uh, early game champion. It's just that she can never really get the full damage down because you're always in minions uh, like like what you see here. So you see she barely did any damage to me. Um, of course, also because of my bone plating, but also because of the minions. Now, Soraka, on the other hand, is, is, it is legitimately one of the strongest early game champions because her healing in the in the laning phase is insane. Here, Maokai goes in onto the Kai'Sa. Um, I can't really follow up because I'm busy clearing out the ward. Um, so and then I just get off an auto attack on Soraka, which actually breaks Soraka's bone plating, which of course is going to be very helpful if we have a fight later on. So here, Maokai flashes in, thumbs Kai'Sa back, ignites her, and I'm actually running her down. And here, she gets below the threshold, and I pull out the spears for first blood. And as you guys uh, saw there, um, now uh, after the latest patch, they did have a change where it shows you the threshold uh, on Kalista for the spears. So uh, honestly, without that threshold, I still would have pulled out the spears at that point, but I may not have chased in for an extra auto. So I think that pre-update, I probably wouldn't have gotten the kill because I I'm not going to lie, even though I play a lot of Kalista, I don't quite have the feeling down of um, you know exactly when to pull the spears but now you don't really have to have that feeling anymore it's now just laid out for you in plain sight now Soraka here does something very crucial which is she interrupts in interrupts sorry me and Maokai's back twice which basically means we cannot go back and uh, I had my boots um, uh, my berserkers greaves in base which of course is gonna give me that major power spike of the attack speed and uh, of course, just just in uh, general, that's a very good item. Now, here the wave is in a very awkward spot because it's just stuck outside the, the enemy tower and we just saw Aatrox at mid. So here I'm suspecting he's here. I actually spot him out, he goes in immediately, smites me down, I try to flash away, but Kai'Sa flashes forward to follow and Aatrox finishes off the kill. Now, I believe that in a world where we actually managed to reset there, we would have got the items and the enemy team would have actually pushed out the wave back towards us. So, uh, if we actually got the back off there, this... Uh, death to the gank would actually never have happened so um, you could put it in two ways number one is that Soraka played it really well but the way I prefer to think about it is that um, you know me and Maokai played very poorly by you know basically picking very greedy very uh, logical um, spots to recall it Soraka is going to basically know like you see people walk into a bush and they start channeling recall it is pretty obvious that they're trying to recall um, so yeah so here there is the new the uh, new Hextech um, toolkit uh, thing that has basically spawned on our side of the map, but before we you know grab it We want to do the more important thing first, which is the ward now I think this hex tech toolkit thing is a real big bait because majority of what it can give you is Not really that good to be very honest. So here we grab the toolkit We actually get the the one that increases or decreases your size now so far every time I've used it It decreases my size 100% of the time like what you see here, uh, which I think is kind of barely useful um, in my opinion um, some of the Probably the best one is the turret that takes um, tower plates for you. That one's probably the best one, uh, in my opinion. The one that heals your team and gives gold is also pretty good. But before we talk about that here, Vi goes in for the gank, starts tanking up the tower. Soraka basically uses everything on Kai'Sa to try to save her, but unfortunately, uh, Maokai has Ignite and he uses it onto uh, the Kai'Sa. So because of that, you know, the healing is cut by a ton and we're able to finish off the Kai'Sa and Soraka left in no man's land and down she goes as well. So now, we are gonna start um, just destroying this tower and in, at the same time we're getting the minions. Now we realize the next wave is actually here. So we actually honestly make a very bad play by greeting for the tower plate. Uh, for the entire tower actually. So here, you can see we're actually gonna be able to get the entire tower. And off the back of that, the enemy team walks a step too far. Maokai goes in, thumbs the Soraka back, and now just focusing Soraka, kill her. Now Kaisa's left high and dry, uh, we kill her as well. Aurelian Soul rotates, and Aatrox is rotating as well. And we actually get out um, scot-free. Like me, Maokai, and Vi all get out. Now this was kind of a disgusting 
uh, play that in most cases would not really have worked because um, you know it's either that the tower gets too tanky and the en enemy team clears the wave or their whole team rotates but in this case uh, it was kind of that perfect scenario where we get the tower they get baited in we basically end up killing them and uh, we get the tower as well we kill them again and then um, we basically run away without even dying, which is kind of disgusting. You can see that at this point, I have like double of Kaisa's goal, which is pretty absurd. A dragon fight is breaking out, but I'm trying to grab this wave before it kind of fully pushes in. Um, Vi unfortunately misses the steal. Looks like we're still going for the fight though. Maokai goes in with the ultimate. I'm using the ward to jump closer to the fight. Aatrox now is on the back line focusing me. Vi spots it out, does uh, basically CC him to prevent him from killing me, and now we have a kind of a split fight. So here I decide to go on Soraka, which I think is always the best target to go for if there's a Soraka on the enemy team, because if you focus anyone else, Soraka's gonna heal them. Soraka now is forced to run from the hills, which leaves Aesol alone, but unfortunately I don't quite have the damage to kill Aesol, which means that he's able to escape as well. Unfortunately I expended my flash there without actually getting a kill, and it appears that uh, Kai'Sa did end up dying to my team, so at least there is that, because she did out into the backline and she basically had nowhere to run, so we did pick up the kill onto her. And um, next up, we pick up the, the um, it's not really the Rift Herald, it's the Hextech Mimic, which is of course going to give you the, I don't know what the things are called, but I, I see it as like three small purple poros that are going to help you collide into the tower, and it's going to, uh, of course, allow you to deal extra damage to the tower. Basically, it's like a, a the old Herald, but it's just, the power is like split evenly amongst the lane, so everyone kind of has a... A, uh, a share in, in the Herald, um, if you want to see it that way. So here, the enemy bot lane makes a mistake of Orc standing again, doesn't line up, they get rooted by Maokai, I get rooted by Soraka's silence, which was very well placed, but unfortunately, there's still no escaping us. Um, so we pick up another free double kill there, and uh, yeah, and in the meanwhile, a fight is breaking out in mid between the Syndra, uh, I mean, basically between the mid jungle of both teams, right? So here, uh, my mid jungle is kind of losing, but um, you know I out Maokai in, Maokai jumps in, doesn't quite get the knockout, but is able to get close and basically uh, CC a, um, the, the Aurelian, um, so he dies, and we are able to put in enough spears into the back of Aatrox to then allow our teammate uh, Vi to finish her off while at critical HP. So now we are going to get off our recall, we grab the Rudan's Hurricane, and um, we of course are at a very strong point. Now, something I have noticed uh, with Kalista on this patch is that she feels a lot weaker. And I was, after like the first like three games, I was kind of thinking like, why does Kalista feel so much weaker? Well, pretty much the answer to that, uh, as we pick up the Mimic, the pretty much the answer to that is Bork, because Bork was very very strong in the last patch. It's just like how this patch, IE and Bork got so much weaker. So did um, Death Cap, and so did um, you know the Infinity Orb, and basically majority of the ruined items pretty much got weaker compared to the last patch. So that is kind of the situation now where it just feels a little bit weird. Like it just feels like you're lacking damage. It's mainly because of course Kalista only released in the ruined patch itself. So you've never even played Kalista without the the ruined Bork. Um, here, we are walking our way up to try to, to catch out the Soraka. Um, I predicted that she would flash, so I actually threw the spear where I thought she would flash to, but she flashed one second later instead. And um, instead, we are able to just pick up the, the, um, the Volley Bear, which is pretty much a free kill anyway. There's no way Volley Bear is getting out of that one. Uh, we are five men strong here. And um, not too much we can really get done here, to be honest. I'm trying to get the Mimics to jump. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out like where is the spot you need to stand to get them to jump because I know you can get them to jump without the wave being there because I've done it before uh, but I, I kind of end up getting caught out instead the mimics are still uh, not yet activated which is a little bit annoying I'm sure people are going to get baited by these mimics uh, and my people I kind of mean me I'm still trying to, to get them in there I finally get them in I get baited <laughs> and I basically throw my life away just to get the mimics to jump in which is you know things that you're gonna basically do uh, at the start of the patch because everyone's just excited to get those loot boxes to basically trigger the mimics to write the t hex and things like that like uh, I've inted for a loot box like once before I realized that a loot box is not even worth inting for um, yeah and uh, 
I wrote the T-Hex once before I realized that the ADC probably shouldn't be the one writing the T-Hex. I'm probably still going to be doing it though because it's the start of the patch and everyone wants to write the T-Hex. But um, in reality, I think that gen in general, the best person to write the T-Hex is generally going to be either the person on your team who's feeding the most or your jungler itself. Because if your ADC or mage rides it, you're losing a major form of physical or magic damage. And if your support rides it, you're either losing a lot of utility or uh, your engage. Uh, and so generally, I think it's between your top laner and your jungler as to who is the, the best to ride it. And seeing as um, most of the time your top laner should be a tank and your jungler should be basically whatever else um, you know is there. So generally, that's why I say that the, the jungler is generally the best person to ride the T-Hex. The uh, of course, you know, in Wild Rift, no one's really gonna listen to that. Here, I basically solo the dragon because my whole team is busy just fighting at the top lane. Syndra is now getting caught and uh, is definitely gonna die here. Not too much we can really do to help her. Now, Maokai, though, wants to go in, pops the ultimate. I go near to get the, the passive from the from the Zeeks. Kai'Sa actually outs away as I try to pull the spears. And uh, I'm able to eventually run her down, full stack lethal tempo, running down the Soraka as well. Now we're chasing down the other the other um, targets, but um, Aatrox is um, running in a uh, into the uh, river, and Volibear is running towards the tower. I'm actually pretty low, so I, I'm actually just content to lifesteal off the minions and grab myself the the um, fruit. Now here, uh, Darius is spam pinging um, for uh, for Baron. He's spamming for Baron, but I don't actually realize that Baron is 30 seconds from spawning. So me and him end up basically standing around like idiots. And I have to say that I basically have never done this before, where I where I don't even realize the spawn time of Baron. And and like at this point, rest, wait a minute, Baron still takes 20 more seconds to spawn. Why are we standing there? And uh, Vi rightfully is like question mark uh, question marking us because like I have no idea what I'm doing either. So anyways, I, I'm gonna get mid lane Pyra, clear out the mid lane. And uh, Maokai is looking to make another play with the ulti. Uh, ulti goes in onto the bunch of them. No tower left there to protect them. Uh, unfortunately, the poor soul who gets uh, sacrificed is going to be Aurelian. So he's not going to be able to make it out uh, of this situation. And now the Baron has actually spawned. So now we are pinging for Baron. And um, here we are all just going to rotate. And of course, the, the basically 12 minute Baron is pretty squishy. Now, any team know that we're doing it because uh, they did just pop the the, the uh, vision plan, so I'm pretty sure they didn't know what they were doing it, but they're not going to do anything to stop us. Now, Aatrox is on the opposite side of the map, however, he has a hex gate available right at his blue buff. So there is a world where he hex gates over and comes over to try to steal Baron. So here instead, Maokai is taking the hex gate over to put the hex gate on cooldown and uh, basically prevent Aatrox from using the hex gate. Because unlike League PC, the hex gate is, is, um, is actually uh, a cooldown on the gate itself is not a per champion cooldown. Like in PC, you basically uh, your whole team can take the hex gate together, but on Wild Rift, uh, only one person can take the hex gate, and the hex gate goes on cooldown whether it's your team or the enemy team. So, anyways, here Vi uh, ends up riding the T hex. Ah, uh, sorry, not Vi. Darius ends up riding the T hex, which I think in this case, I think Syndra would probably be the best T hex rider because she is kind of. Uh, she's kind of feeding, but honestly, Darius, despite having a good KDA, is not doesn't have a lot more gold than Syndra, so I guess this is fine. Like, Vi, really, really fast. She shouldn't be running the TX, neither should I, and of course, Maokai has all the utility, so really, it's between Syndra and Darius. And I think Darius riding the TX here is actually fine. Um, yeah. So, here, uh, honestly, it's just the start of the patch. It's only like uh, the, the second, third day. Uh, of the patch and no one really knows what they're doing when they are using the the t-hex like honestly like no one knows what they're doing i i only wrote the t-hex like once at this point i have no idea what i'm doing either i'm probably just trying to figure out the spells i can't even figure out how to eject myself from the t-hex <laughs> honestly but uh yeah so uh but however one thing that i will say about the t-hex is it seems to prolong the game tremendously because with baron um, you, your team can push multiple lanes at the same time, whereas with the T-Hex, you really can. So, with Baron, you are able to push, uh, you know, multiple lanes, and you can get more towers, and basically get the inhibs down, which then is going to basically lead to it being easier to end the game. But with the T-Hex, basically everyone just takes the T-Hex, they run down mid, and they take the mid lane inhib, and they just stay mid with the T-Hex, and basically 
do nothing else with it. Now, I feel that the best play with the TX is to either get mid lane, inhib, and rotate to another lane, or just go down another lane uh, altogether and uh, secure that lane. Um, and of course, the Baron Empowered minions only are, uh, are empowered by the T-Hex, it's not empowered by you anymore, so uh, with everyone basically just running down mid with the T-Hex, it basically just forces a lot of ARAMs, which is, yeah, which is not, not really good. Um, the T-Hex initially I felt was really really tanky, but honestly after after a while, I realized that the main problem with the T-Hex is that it's really hard for T-Hex to output the damage. Uh, maybe it's just because everyone at this point is are bad drivers, but the Q is so easy to dodge. The T-Hex um, W, I honestly don't even know what the T-Hex W does. Here we go for another dive because we are, we are our team is like so fed and they can basically tank tower. And uh, yeah, and the, the E is just the knockback with the tail and the ulti is just that laser thing that's really hard to land. So maybe we'll see better TX drivers, uh, including maybe myself in the later uh, in the later part of the patch. But for now, this is gonna be the end of the game because we eliminated the enemy team. We're even gonna go for the last kill onto Kaisa. We get the last kill just before the game ends, I believe, or we don't. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, um, yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.